welcome you to the 20th episode of Let's Talk About Electric Vehicles. My name is Teresa, I'm an economist, and this podcast is all about the electrification of transportation systems. I try to find out if electrified transportation makes economic sense, what kind of challenges there might be yet to conquer, and most of all, I try to debunk common misperceptions and conspiracies. While I would consider myself as an electric car enthusiast, I still try to provide an objective and rational perspective on the topic. My content is either research-based or it highlights the areas where there's still too little information to make concrete conclusions. I try to avoid cherry-picking of studies that deliver a particular desired output, which is why I sometimes present contradicting information. And because I'm an economist, I focus more on the economic side of things. So over time, I would like to learn more about the engineering side of things, just out of personal interest. And it's very hard to talk about the effects of electric transit on the economy when you don't have a clue about the technical details. Before we talk about raw material dependencies and raw material scarcities today, I would like to thank my first patrons, Owen, Shane and Christine. If you like my content and would like to support this project by $1 per month or more, just follow the link in the show notes. There is not enough cobalt on this planet. Electric cars exploit Mother Nature's resources. Is that true or false? After this episode, you will for sure have a lot of new discussion material and facts to offer at the next electric car discussion with your friends. Because today we are talking about rare earth elements and whether or not there is enough of them for a fully electrified transportation system. I have a study by the European Federation for Transport and Environment from 2017 laying in front of me. I have referred to it a couple of times before, but actually there is enough information about material extraction in there to fill an entire episode. My first question is, what kind of critical materials do electric cars require that gasoline cars don't require? When people talk about rare materials used in electric vehicles, I hear them mainly talking a lot about lithium and cobalt. These are both materials that are used in lithium-ion batteries. I hardly ever hear anyone talking about copper used for wiring and materials used for the permanent magnets in electric motors. Whereas in reality, these are the actual candidates for potential raw material scarcities. Let's start at the beginning. REE is the abbreviation for rare earth elements. This is a list of 17 elements that are, despite their name, not necessarily scarce, but they are somehow hard to get. Partly because they are hard to mine or because they are only available in very small amounts at a single spot. So they are distributed over many places but in relatively small concentrations, which makes it hard to make the mining economically profitable. Since everyone seems so overly concerned about the battery materials, let's start off by the battery. So you all know that there are several different battery chemistries. Some of the most common ones are NCA and NMC, which which use lithium, cobalt, nickel, and graphite as their cathode, anode, or electrolyte material. By the way, none of them count as a rare earth element. So where do we find these materials? Most of the known lithium resources are found in Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile, also known as the South American Lithium Triangle. Furthermore, there is lithium in Australia, in China, and in small amounts at various other places around the globe. You can mine lithium even in Alberta, where I live. To give you an idea about the numbers, the lithium resources in the South American Triangle are estimated to be around 16.5 million tons. The Australian resources are about 2 million tons and China has approximately more than 7.5 million tons. The overall global resources of lithium are estimated to be around 40 million tons. And just as a little comparison, in 2016 the worldwide lithium production amounted to 35,000 tons. The large estimated lithium reserves in South America are mainly untouched though. The economy of these countries could really benefit from 
extracting more lithium in the future. The most lithium mining today happens in Chile and in Australia. Now, the report that I have here estimates that the lithium resources will last for 180 years or something. Given the numbers of 40 million tons overall resources, 35,000 tons production in 2016, I did my own little calculation in a spreadsheet and I said that if the electric vehicle market doubles each year for the next 10 years and then slowly further grows by 2% for all of the subsequent years, with technology staying constant, we would run out of lithium in about 150 years. These are just some random assumptions that I made. I wanted to do a little calculation myself. I know that it is highly unlikely that technology does not change for the next 150 years. So we really should not be concerned about exploiting any lithium resources. If you find my assumptions weird, I might upload the spreadsheet and you can enter all, any sorts of assumptions about the future EV market and future lithium demand and see for how many years we would have enough lithium. Moving on to cobalt. There are overall approximately 5 million tons of cobalt on this earth, according to this report. These resources are mainly found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Australia and in Cuba. In 2017, about 45,000 tons of cobalt were used to manufacture electric vehicles and batteries. As for graphite, which is used for the anode of lithium-ion batteries, it is estimated that the Earth's resources of graphite are 250 megatons, which is, I, I actually, I had to look that one up, equal to 250 million metric tons. The current demand for graphite in 2016 was 250,000 tons. And uh, this material comes according to the study actually mainly from China and nowhere else. The known reserves of nickel are 78 million tons versus a demand of 2.5 million tons in 2016. The biggest nickel producers currently are the Philippines, Canada and Australia. So these are all materials that are not very likely to be exploited with a rising number of electric vehicles, especially when considering that the chemistry of the battery is changing over time in a way that it requires less of the critical materials. And considering the fact that you can actually recycle over 90% of all materials in the battery at the current level of technology, there is really no reason to freak out about running out of lithium, cobalt, graphite or nickel. However, this is not the whole story. You know that electric motors, that an electric motor works because of the electromagnetic field that is created. Most electric motors use permanent magnets. And the elements used in these permanent magnets, they are indeed scarce and could cause trouble. I am talking about two elements in particular called neodymium and dysprosium. I don't know how important these permanent magnets are or how much it would cost to substitute them with electromagnets, but someone will have to come up with a, with a solution for that problem. I think there are some manufacturers, BMW for example, whose motors do not rely on permanent magnets anymore. I am only talking about the raw material resources today. I was actually quite shocked to read about the skyrocketing copper demand due to electric cars. An electric vehicle uses on average four times as much copper than a gasoline car, namely about 80 kilogram. So 80 kilogram copper per vehicle. The copper is used for wiring for the electric motor and the battery. And that could indeed become a problem to this, according to the study. So with a rising number of electric cars, we would need new copper mining facilities. We know now that technically there exists enough of the raw materials for a fully electrified transportation system with some exemptions for the materials in the permanent magnets and copper for which manufacturers still have to find a solution. But the chances are high that the supply for most critical materials is very likely to be sufficient. But the general availability of the materials is actually not the real problem. The real problem is the distribution of these natural resources. 
all of a sudden, third world countries have the potential to become powerful exporters due to the electric car market rise. And other Western countries who may have benefited from natural oil resources in the past will suddenly lose their power. Many natural resources are concentrated around one specific area, and oftentimes this specific area is China, as it is for example for graphite and most of the rare earth elements. And this is where it gets very exciting for me as an economist, so how will the world economy react to such a massive power shift? It should actually be in each country's interest to foster recycling and, if there are critical resources available, to enhance the mining processes in the own country. This is the case especially for lithium as there are many resources in Europe and in North America. Many Western countries still hold on to the past resource distribution though and still hope to keep their leverage instead of preparing for the power shift and instead of trying to minimize the upcoming import dependencies. This will unfortunately lead many former world leaders into a recession, which is kind of painful to watch actually. And also, I wonder how the South American lithium triangle will further develop. If they will realize their potential and use their resources wisely in order to form economic growth. And important to note here, only because there are no material scarcities does not mean that we should not be concerned about the mining process at all. Mining requires a lot of energy. Lithium, for example, is produced either by crushing rocks or by pumping it from brines and then purifying it with chemicals. If materials are not available in large concentrations at the same spot, the process is even more energy intensive and involves long transportation routes. And especially when it comes to cobalt, there are a lot of social concerns involved too. Since many materials are found in third world countries, chances are high that the working conditions are anything but fair. I am talking about child labor, exploitation of poor living circumstances, and even slavery. Therefore, the demand for raw materials should in any case be monitored by authorities and not solely be determined under free market conditions. One should consider measurements like certification schemes and incentives for recycling and uh, for finding efficient material compositions for the battery or for the motor. To sum up this episode, the natural resources of battery materials like lithium, cobalt, nickel or graphite are very unlikely to be exploited, whereas some rare earth elements used in the permanent magnets for the electric motor and the increased demand for copper used for wiring could indeed become a problem. Efficient counter strategies are finding better material compositions that use less critical materials and establishing an efficient recycling routine. The problem is not that there are too little material reserves, but rather the distribution of the critical resources. Some former world leaders will lose their power and some other countries such as China, Bolivia, Chile, the Philippines and many more have the potential to gain power. Some Western countries fail to see the signs and do not adequately prepare themselves for the global power shift. Even though recycling rates of 98% of the materials are technically possible, there is still no efficient recycling routine. This is so frustrating. And even though there are lithium resources in Europe and in North America, there is little effort to establish an efficient extraction process. Also, the mining process can be very energy intensive, which is both expensive and also emission intensive and mining in third world countries comes with substantial social concerns. It is important to minimize the import dependencies and it is also important to monitor the global, the global demand for critical materials. We have reached the end of the episode. I hope that I could teach you something new today. You will find my all of my references and contact information in the show notes. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me for feedback or for topic suggestions. If you would like to support this podcast, follow the link to my Patreon account in the show notes and let us talk about electric vehicles again next week. Have a wonderful day, week, year, whatever. Bye!